Hey everybody, it's Kendrick from Providence Tarot coming to you with your weeklies for the first week of March 2020. So, what we're thinking about, thinking the three right here of pentacles is money. We're thinking about finances and we're thinking about how we can make our money work for us. We're thinking about how we can, um, you know, feel better about our money and about our work, our job, and our career. This is Mars and Capricorn and this is actually a current transit that we're going through right now you know we're currently in this transit of mars and capricorn mars is exalted there so it's saying that you can really get the best out of whatever situation that you're facing right now you might even have to go over some things with work or with money you might have to re um you know delegate some things you might have to look at some finances and maybe some bills again that type of thing you might even have to go back and like fix some things, right? This could even be talking about actual construction that might be going on in your home because you might be trying to keep an environment, uh, you know, safe. You might be keeping trying to keep an environment functional. Uh, and it could even just be talking about the stability within an environment. It could even be talking about the consistency with the, some, within an environment or the consistency within a work environment. Somebody might be asking some questions about work. You know, Some of you might even be getting asked to work, right? It's actually a job that's being given to you or that's being offered to you, okay? And you feel like it's something that might be good. You're really considering it. You are definitely definitely going to be waiting to see what happens, you know, especially after the Mercury retrograde. I believe that's something that everybody is kind of like paying attention to and people are kind of like uh, adhering to that principle or that idea of not making big plans until after the retrograde. Uh, I'm reading the cards differently. Uh, I'm just going to read them separately. I'm sorry. So the Queen of Rods here, this is giving you like Aries energy. It could even be Leo. This is like fiery energy. So some people are very determined about what they want to do. Some people are determined about, you know, where they even see themselves going, right? You could be trying to make the most of your time, right? With this Queen of Rods being here. Um... You know, you could even just be feeling like, you know, trying to make the best of your time, right? Or even just trying to, like, do um, as many things as you can, right, on your own right now, on your own time or whatever. I feel like you guys might even have, like, multiple jobs. That's the thing. The Queen of Rods, it's like... I can, uh, I am, and it's I can, right? I am and I can. And then this three of pentacles over here is just saying that you might even be doing the most, right? Um, it's a lot of energy with these two cards. It's a lot of action and a lot of assertiveness, a lot of, um, you know, putting things together and making them work and function to, 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 to make things more efficient, right? So we're thinking about efficiency and we're also thinking about how we can like, um, you know, make a meaningful connection that is actually going to benefit us and get us somewhere. You know, we're looking at things developing. We're looking at things growing as well. So we definitely want to see things grow from the work and the effort that we have put towards our job, right? Or the things that we have sort of like, um, the things that are important to us, right? Because the threes do talk about, you know, understanding what is important, right? So we try to, we're trying to understand what's important in terms of like practically, right? So you have to think practically here. If you haven't been thinking practically, then that maybe that is the assertion for you, for us, for all of us to really think practically in this moment. The Queen of Rods is really in this moment. The Three of Pentacles is really in this moment as well. And the Queen of Rods, you know, she's giving us um, a little bit of Pisces energy, right? So there we go with that Mercury retrograde in Pisces. It's going to fall back into Aquarius, which it probably already has. And then it's going to move forward again through Pisces. And once it makes it through Pisces, it'll be in Aries. So maybe once we get to that, uh, that energy of Mercury being in Aries, things will start to make a little bit more sense to you practically. And you'll be able to see things in front of you. And you'll be able to measure time. And you'll be able to measure things out, period, right? Measure the growth of something right? If if the growth of something is possible, because the threes also talk about possibilities, right? Understanding the possibilities and being open to the possibilities, right? 
So it is talking about optimism and, and believing in what you can create at the same time, right? But also understanding how others can be helpful towards what you are trying to create. The Queen of Rods is a little bit stubborn, you know? She's kind of uh, just wants to do things her way. And that could also be it too. Maybe you'll get more done by doing the work yourself. You know what I mean? That could very well be it. Um, but things will definitely be improving around Aries season and around the time that Mars makes it or um, that Mercury makes itself back around to Aries, okay? And Mars and Capricorn is going to be good too. All right. Aries, your card for this week is the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter. Jupiter is talking about luck. It's talking about expansion, but it's also talking about opportunity and being able to understand that when an opportunity presents itself, it might be the only time that that opportunity presents itself. Are you going to sacrifice that opportunity or are you going to see where it takes you? This talks about changes that might be happening in your life, period. It could be talking about changes that are happening in your career or changes that you feel yourself are happening the, within, your, within you, you know, where you feel you're, like you might want to be going. Travel plans might be affected right now. Or you might just be feeling like you want to change directions with something. It could be a project that you might be dealing with. Or it could be like a, a person, right? You just want, you just feel like you want things to actually go in a new direction or a different direction. It definitely is a change of focus. And it feels like a breath of fresh air. You might be feeling like you have a lot of ideas. And you're just trying to like streamline them so that you can like... Uh, you know, bring some order to some things, right? Because the Wheel of Fortune does also talk about the disorder of things. You know, sometimes Jupiter will let things get out of control because it's just kind of like been going about its like its its natural ways, its instinct, yeah? So sometimes instinct can let things get out of control, okay? And this is also talking about focusing your energy right now because your energy might even be all over the place. You know what I mean? With the Wheel of Fortune and Jupiter. But it is talking about luck and if your energy isn't all over the place and you are focused, you will be able to take advantage of those opportunities when they present themselves. Or you'll be able to make some improvements to some opportunities that have already presented themselves, right, that you're already dealing with, that you might be feeling a little bit scatterbrained about. You know what I mean? It's talking about directing that energy in a positive way, in a way where it's going to get somewhere. This card is also talking about, you know, a sense of completion, right? That also sparks a new beginning. So the completion might come as something is stirred up, right? And something just kind of like presents itself as something different or something that has changed. So in that sense, the thing that once was has then died or has come to a completion. That idea has. It's like uh, maybe it's old, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like you need to... That's that's what the fresh idea was that I was talking about, you know, but the ideas definitely need to be placed down like blocks would be if you're building like a house or something like that. You wouldn't just lay the bricks down any kind of way. You need to bring some order to things. You know what I mean? Definitely. And you'll start to see things develop in a in in a way where it makes you feel like you're actually gaining a lot of progress and you're seeing what you want to see. Taurus, this is your card for the first week of March. You're dealing with the King of Rods, and this is fixed fire, so this is Leo energy. You might be dealing with someone's ego, right? You or someone else. Or you could just be be dealing with the demands of someone else, right? And it's kind of, like, difficult to deal with the demands of this person. Or they, they might just be very demanding of your energy, you know what I mean? Because they might just be focused on what it is that they want, and they may not be able or willing to see what it is that would bring about balance for everybody, you know, because this is Leo and it's talking about knowing what you yourself can create, but it's also talking about knowing what you can create with other people because together we are stronger and together we do know more and together we can do more. You know what I mean? So this could kind of be somebody that just kind of wants to do things their way. And you could, it could be you and somebody could be trying to convince you otherwise. But it's kind of like they won't be able to convince you to change your mind with this one. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you want what you want. Um, also, at the same time, 
this is a little bit of that cancer energy, right? So there could be some hidden fears here, you know, because sometimes the control, control really does stem from fear. You know what I mean? And um, he, he, he might be blocking something. That's, there's parts of him that you probably don't, don't, don't get to see. You know what I mean? You only really get to see his actions. You don't get to see what's going on in his head. So you could be trying to figure out what's going on in someone's head, Taurus, right? It could be any fire sign, but specifically that energy of Leo, right? You know, trying to figure someone's motives out, right? What are their motivations? You know, being one third cancer, we're dealing with emotions and we're, we're dealing with how those motivations are being stirred up, right? Okay. How they're being moved. This energy also squares you, Taurus, right? So there could be some conflict with this person and you guys could definitely be trying to resolve it. It's a square. And if you look at that cross on him, that cross gives you the energy of a square, right? And the king of rods, you know, they're sort of stubborn and Taurus is stubborn as well. So you, when you get two stubborn people together, it's kind of like they both want what they want and they kind of like won't, the situation won't develop or move or progress or move forward because both people are stubborn. You could even be dealing with a Scorpio, you know what I mean? Um, perhaps. Um, yeah, so it really is talking about, you know, like letting go of something that you can't control, maybe letting go of old ways or letting go of ways that like maybe getting in your way, perhaps, you know, and then you'll be able to actually get what you want, right? Right? It's kind of like you got to be a little bit more flexible. Gemini, your card for the first week of March is the Seven of Pentacles, and this is Saturn and Taurus. These are both very slow energies, right? But the Sevens are sort of like anxious. They want to move forward with something, right? They don't want to feel stuck anymore. So you might be feeling stuck with your job, or you might be feeling stuck with your finances, or you might be feeling stuck in the way that you feel about a boss, or you might just be feeling kind of like undecided about something, indifferent, you know? Some of you guys could be feeling like you want to feel, you want to see a relationship move forward, but it's it's happening very slowly, you know? Saturn is also responsibility, so it could be you weighing out your responsibilities and understanding them in a, in a new way, you know? The sevens are talking about wanting things to sort of like be better, get better, improve, you know? It's talking about victory. And victory would mean that an improvement has happened. The sevens are trying to determine something. And there's a waiting period that's happening here because there, there is a conflict. So it hasn't been resolved. So that means that there's, more, there's some more time to take before you feel like the situation has gotten to a point where you feel better about it. And we are talking about how you feel about it and maybe not how the situation actually is, right? Because Saturn is saying you're almost there. The seven is saying that you have done some work and there is, you know, a, a, a history of work to measure, right? It's saying, look, you can, you can measure the work that you've actually done, Gemini. It's like, don't give up, at, don't give up here and don't be triggered by the difficulties, right? Because you have to try hard at some things or some things take a little bit longer to, to, to grow or to mature, you know what I mean? Or to come into focus for you because it really is talking about something coming into focus for you. You know, we don't want you to ignore the work that you have done because you are just looking at what you want it to be at the end. It really is about the process and Saturn wants you to learn something through that process and not just feel like something was just given to you. You know what I mean? These sevens are talking about evolution. So there's something, there's something very uh, important here, right? For this evolution to take place because it's very pivotal for you. The sevens are a pivot point, you know, it's coming from a place of feeling stagnant and moving forward, you know, so, but this is a slow moving forward, you know, it's, it's giving you a chance to look at the scenery here, really take it in, take in what this experience is teaching you, because Saturn is the teacher, right, and you really need to know, right, and we really don't want you to forget, okay, it's about the application and it's also about the re retaining, the retention.
Cancer, your card for the first week of March. This is a six, which refers back to the lovers, which is talking about Mercury, right? But this is kind of like a younger version of the lovers, okay? So it's kind of like thinking about the past, having a compassionate view of the past. You know what I mean? It's that look of nostalgia, but that nostalgia might be making you feel resentful. It might be making you feel jealous. It might be making you feel resentful. And it also might be making you feel like there's some things that you want to say that you haven't said that might be hurtful, right? But then it's also having you look at yourself back then and forgive the choices that you might have made, right? That weren't uh, conducive to you living a healthy life, right? Or this could even be, be you know, healthy relationships, right? Because it is talking about the beauty of the reciprocity of things that you choose to, you know, connect with, right? And kind of like on, on, a, on, a, on a level where, uh, you know, it may not make sense, but you just kind of like let it happen and you kind of like let it flow. So this is talking about letting your emotions flow. You know what so I mean? So we're looking at what happens when you take those emotions and you just let them flow. Because we are looking at letting your emotions flow. You know what I mean? Letting your emotions flow from one phase to another. Because it's kind of like your emotions are baggage too that you carry with you. And water, you know, water is actually heavy. You know, it's very dense, right? Especially when you contain it. Like Scorpio. So you might be holding on to some old emotions from the past that you might want to cleanse yourself of. That's why those white lilies are there. You know? It's talking about the beauty of clarity, right? The pureness of forgiveness. Yeah. And then it's also talking about cloaking yourself in optimism. It's like forgiving, like forgiving the past. You know, that's why that the, the younger version of you is cloaked in the yellow. Right. And then the newer you is not covered. It's not it's not being protected. It's not being closed off. It's opening yourself up to the feeling of being able to transform from that old place coming from that old place. You know, these are emotions being triggered, right, by people or by things that might be happening or occurring because it's sun and Scorpio, you know. And the sun and Scorpio is talking about the sun being in the eighth house of hidden things. It's talking about of secrets, right? So there might be some things that you don't know. You may not get that reciprocity. You may not get that compromise that you wanted, right? You may not get to say what you truly feel, or you might not get to hear what someone else truly feels. It really is just going to have to be what it was then, and it's going to have to be what it is that you're making it now, because you're, the power is in now, right? And the future, it, the future really just sort of like stems from now. So really make the best moment of where you are now, Cancer. You know, stop thinking about the past. Stop hurting from it. You can't change it. Stop doing that. Leo, your card for the first week of March is the Fool. This is Uranus. So you might be dealing with an Aquarius. You could even be dealing with a Libra or both because the Fool, Uranus, esoterically is the ruler of Libra. So this is kind of like letting go of things, right? Letting go of all things, right? Because the card that comes before this is actually the world. And that's Saturn. And that's talking about something that has aged itself out and something that has kind of gotten to a point of, you know, a gradual switch, a gradual change, you know. There's something else that can come from the old that is actually new, you know. It's like everything old is new again. You know that song from, uh, not Fosse, but All That Jazz, right? It's from that. Um... But the fool is saying that you are coming from a place, a place of needing, of wanting to kind of like rid yourself of the things that were weighing you down and holding you back, you know, because Uranus doesn't want to be held down or, 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 or held back, right? And then it's talking about a new beginning that you can see, right? You're almost there. You're kind of in an in-between place right now. And that makes sense, being that this is Pisces season, you know? And Neptune rules Pisces season, you know? And there was one point in the sky, right, where Uranus and Neptune actually switched sp spots, okay? Due to... Uranus coming in and taking <laughs> Neptune's spot, right? <laughs>
So it's talking about anything is possible, you know, and anything can happen, right? And you're open to anything happening. You're still on a journey of having things change for you, right? So you could be feeling like you are hanging in this place of consistency, right? You're kind of like um, keeping the tempo, that's what the fool does. Keeps the tempo, keeps it moving, keeps trekking, right? And it's optimism as well, because all you can do is keep it moving, you know? And I feel like you have your your head up, right? Your head to the sky. And not in a like highfalutin way, but in an optimism, in an optimistic way, in a way where you're hopeful, right? And you feel like you can achieve something. Right? There's something more, you know? It's a feeling and a sense of expansion. Definitely. Things can change. Hey, Virgo. You could be dealing with a Cancer or a Scorpio because Cancer got the Six of Cups for this week, referring to the lovers, which is Mercury. We're in a Mercury retrograde. You got the Six of Swords, which is Mercury and Aquarius. That's an exaltation. That's a very dignified position. It's kind of seeing what, you know, has been happening, right? Looking at the details of a situation and being able to take that knowledge that you have gained and apply it in a meaningful way that is going to bring about some, you know, level, some aspect of change to your reality, right? That's going to be beneficial to you. This is also like, you know, new ideas. Maybe, uh, maybe an Aquarius is like, changing things for you or helping you change things or this could even have something to do with um, communication, right? Communication comes in many different forms. This is the car that in the suit that talks about beauty. Communication comes in many different forms, right? And we're talking about communicating with beauty. It's talking about listening when we talk when we communicate, it's learning and understanding for sure. It's kind of like trying to improve something. You could be trying to improve the way that you communicate in some kind of way. Writing, speaking, right? You know, and this could be like something dealing with friends. So a friend could be helping you with something, you know? A friend could be helping you with something because the sixth house of Virgo is service oriented and wants to help you know, make things better. And Aquarius is talking about friendship. So these two energies together are talking about friends helping you to improve and make something better. And it's getting you to move on to another, another, another um, area, right? It's changing your idea about yourself. You know, it's, it's like someone is getting you to see things differently. And because they are helping you to see things differently, it's kind of like taking you to a new place physically or in your mind, you know, because Mercury is talking about travel, but Mercury is also talking about your mind, right? Psychologically, intellectually. So this could be like sharing some sort of intellectual bond with someone because the lovers and the sixes are also talking about a bond that you share, you know, some sort of tie. Shared energy, collective energy, mutual energy. That's why there are two people in all of the sixes, right? Two or more, you know? And if there's another one, that's that's like a more of a spiritual entity. So there's something very spiritual here. Libra, this is your card for the first week of March. You got the three of wands, and this is a sun in Aries. It's a three. So it's related to the third house of Gemini. You could be dealing with a Gemini, or you could be dealing with communication, or you might need to act on your idea of communicating, or maybe you have acted on something, you know, and you're just trying to see where something is taking you, you know, because the threes are really talking about short distance travel, 
you know, maybe you could be traveling short distance a lot, you know, commuting or something like that. Or maybe you have a lot of things going on. You're trying to do a lot of things. Maybe you have a lot of things going on in your head about what you want to do because Aries wants to do things, you know, and the threes are, are talking about a need, right? A need for multiplicity, you know, it's talking about maybe you're getting anxious or maybe you're getting bored with something, you know, it could be that. We're talking about actually feeling passionate about growth and feeling passionate about self-growth because it's Aries and we're talking about the self. But the threes are also talking about growth because it's related to the Empress. But also, at the beginning of the readings for this week, the Queen of Wands came up. Then the Queen of Wands also refers back to the Three of Wands. So it is talking about, you know, feeling very resolute with something determined, passionate, wanting to move forward definitely with something, and you're waiting to hear back. You might be waiting to hear back from a woman. Maybe a woman wants to communicate with you, or maybe an Aries or a Leo person wants to communicate with you, or maybe there's something in terms of communication that's going to happen or that's going to be happening, uh, you know, with you doing something, perhaps, you know. It could even be talking about a skill, right, with this three being here. Whatever's happening here, it's been in the works and there's something that's been generating, but it's still in its early stages. And because it's in its early stages, and this is an Aries card, it's saying like you definitely want to see it present itself in a very healthy way. And when I say in a healthy way, that means that you're going to get the information or get the feedback and you'll feel good about it. You'll feel like you can then move forward to the next thing, right? It's going to give you a little bit more security once you do hear back or once you have that, that you know, that extra bit of information that you're looking for. This is definitely talking about, you know... um, Standing up for what you believe in and also going for what you believe in, you know, and being confident about that too, right? And taking risks, you know what I mean? And being a little bit uh, playful with it and being optimistic about what it is that you're doing because you're going to do it really well because it's a three and it's Aries. However, it does say that you're going to have to wait because the threes are talking about waiting, being related to the Empress, right? Regardless of whether or not you don't want to wait, Right? You might you might have to. After the retrograde, we really only have less than two weeks. You know what I mean? It's March 3rd officially at this moment. It's 1251. Does anybody listen to the strokes out there? Uh, and it's the third, right? And it's a three here. Um, but yeah, we're going to wait for this Mercury retrograde to end. And we're going to move forward with the information that we get. And it, it should be in a positive way. You know what I mean? And if some of you have turned your back on someone because you've been being stubborn, you're waiting for something. You might be waiting for an apology or you might just be waiting for someone to show you and prove to you, right? Hmm. Good luck. Scorpio, what's the disappointment that you're dealing with for this first week of March? You know what I mean? This energy here is saying that you might even just be being a little bit petty about something, or you might be being a little bit of a brat or a sore, sore sport, right? Um, you're dealing with your emotions in a, an immature way. There's something for you to learn here, and there's something for you to take from this. Um, it's also just saying that, like, how are you going to deal with these emotions in a positive way? You know, you've got to be compassionate with yourself. You know, I understand that there's a lot that goes on in your head and your mind and your heart and your feelings, everything like that. But when people are trying to cheer you up, you have to realize that they're trying to cheer you up because there's something more than just what you had hoped for that is no longer. You know, there's always going to be a way for you to get past something you know you could be dealing with children right and you could be dealing with over emotional children that might be frustrating you some way somehow you could be dealing with frustrating you know clients or you could be dealing with people that just might be acting emotionally immature around you and that might just be annoying you you know what i mean that type of thing some of you guys might even feel like you're unable to share your feelings or you might just be you know feeling some kind of way and you don't know how to deal with it because it's like 
how do I tell people about how I'm feeling? Because there's so many layers to how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? Look at all the layers that this person is wearing. There's so much. You know, it's kind of like a, a child dealing with a lot of emotional weight. Right. It's like, how do you explain to a child what they're going through to make it logical and practical for them to understand that it is going to be OK? Right. So that's kind of like the energy that you're getting. You're like, I don't even know how it's going to be OK at this point, you know, but it actually is. Right. And you could even just be having first world problems. Right. It, this problem that you're having may not be like, how am I going to put food on the table tonight? But if you are having that problem, then I would definitely suggest that you look for help in areas or ways that, you know, maybe you might be being stubborn or maybe you're not looking for. So, you know, the Page of Cups does talk about being stubborn, right, and not wanting to take advice or not wanting to learn your lesson and kind of wanting to do things the way that you have been doing them, right? It's very uh, Veruca Salt, right? Very Veruca Salt. Look at her. Look at this person. Look at them. Right? They look very luxurious, but they're still sad. So it's like all the things in the world is not going to be, aren't going to be able to, um, you know, fill this void or take away from this feeling of loneliness that you're having. You know, you're going to have to face your fears and deal with these emotions yourself, you know? Sagittarius, your card for the first week of March is your card, the temperance card. We're talking about, you know, the growth and the understanding, the acknowledgement of what you might have been giving up at this point, right? Because this is number 14, the temperance card, and it reduces to a five. So it does talk about what you might have been, you know, giving up, ignoring, subscribing to that you may no longer want to subscribe to because things have changed. You're adapting to a new reality because it's a five. So it's talking about your reality, you know, and when your reality changes, you're found, you know, your, your principles change. You know what I mean? Your ideas change about what it is that you want to do with yourself and with your environment with your with your space with your time with your everything you know and this could be wanting to change your job this could be wanting to move or change your house or move and change where the place that you live in you know you know this is also talking about dealing with your belief systems and those being challenged right because the temperance card does talk about improvements that are made and things that happen on a cosmic level right we've just experienced a lot of um uh, downloads and information that are coming from like the, the galactic center because a lot of planets are over there around that area. Well, they were passing through. They have passed through already. They're not there anymore. Um, but it's kind of like being tested, right? Spiritually and being like, you know what? If I want to move forward in life, if I want to like join the rest of society because it is a five related to the Hierophant, then I'm going to have to realize where it is that I've been letting myself get away with things that I probably shouldn't allow myself to get away with, right? And now I'm going to have to deal with those things. I'm going to have to come to some terms with it and I'm going to have to achieve, sorry about the shaky camera, some level of spiritual balance. Because it's like you don't want to get left behind in terms of like, the way that you look at life or the way that you see things, you know, you don't want to hold yourself back due to old principles or old ways. Yeah, it's kind of like you're not running around using a fucking MacBook from 1995, are you? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you, you, you know, some, some, some ways become obsolete and we have to realize that those ways are obsolete, right? It's kind of like how slavery was abolished. Oh, we're changing direction, honey. This doesn't make any sense anymore. Why are we doing this? We need to let women vote. Why are we not? Change, change it up. Let's adapt to this new way of doing things because thus far, like, we were ignoring the fact that this wasn't right. So now moving forward, we're going to do things the right way. You know what I mean? So we could be looking at that too, Sag. Right? And if you notice the feet on this angel, right, it's in the water and it's on land. So it's like in the place that it knows, but it's kind of like reluctant to go to the place that it doesn't know, right? So travel has something to do with it because it's Sagittarius and that talks about distance, right? So, and it's a five two, so it's talking about a commitment as well. But then it's talking about, you know, 
com being committed to distancing yourself from that old thing that you once were, that you're not anymore. Realizing that, you know, listening to your conscience. What is your conscience telling you, right? To do the right thing, right? What are you creating, right? What's your conscience telling you to create? What is it telling you to move forward with from here, from the point? Where are you now? That's what it's saying, really. Where you find yourself now, okay? And we're trying to achieve balance. And that is what's going to achieve balance, knowing where you are now and moving forward. Capricorn. Y'all almost had me fooled. I was going to say you got your Jupiter and Capricorn. It's not. This is Mars in Aries. And Mars is in Capricorn right now. Your sign. So you kind of got this energy that you're dealing with. This card is the Lord of Dominion. And it talks about movement. It talks about, you know, anxiousness. It talks about growth and expansion as well. The duplication and the folding of something, right? Being able to make something happen more and more and more. That's the growth. A little bit at a time I'm getting with this card, you know, because you probably are feeling anxious to move, move, move quickly, but it's saying a little bit at a time, you know. Taurus is a second house, and that is kind of like a slower, a slower, more plodding energy, right? But then this is saying that you are willing to go the distance and you are willing to do what it is that you have to do to make things work for you with this idea okay this is also talking about partnerships right maybe um duos business partnerships working together with people or collaborations collaborative efforts so there might be a lot of planning that's happening there are a lot of uh you know yeses and nos bouncing ideas off of each other right seeing what you can come up with that type of thing and some of it is also flying by the seat of your pants you know um you're trying to stay very practical and principled about it at the same time you're looking towards the future with a lot of optimism and a lot of passion towards what it is that you guys have have going on that you believe in. You know what I mean? It could be a product. It could also even be, uh, you know, some sort of institution. It could even be something that's healing, right? So some of you guys are, are even, you know, actively healing from something. I don't know what that is. It could be talking about going into physical therapy for sure. You're experiencing some kind of change that's happening. You know what I mean? Um, being that it's also Mars in Aries, some of you guys might be getting headaches, right? Because Aries rules the head. And then Gemini is talking about the mind, right? So this could be talking about headaches too for some of you guys. Uh, so you could be treating some headaches. Um, also with the two of wands, it, it's talking about something being revealed to you, right? And you, you, you learning and gaining wisdom through the action, right? It's kind of like learning as you go. So that's sort of like the risky part about it. You might be feeling a little bit vulnerable or a little bit insecure because you are learning as you go, but you are still being very active in your pursuits to kind of like get somewhere and to see things change and to see things grow. You know, you're kind of like adding adding fire or adding passion to the fire, right? That's already lit. And that's good. It's getting somewhere. Aquarius, your card for the first week of March is the Emperor. And this is a, you know, major arcana number four. This is Aries energy. It's a card of like, you know, um, passion it's a card of executive energy it's a leader right so there's something that you want there's something that you're determined to have you know and i feel like you are not going to basically settle for no right because the emperor doesn't settle for no usually he 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 gets what he wants and he wants what he wants you could be dealing with a cancer or you could just be dealing with something some kind of some kind of insecurity because the fours are talking about an insecurity right um that's where the this desire stems from something right so the fact that you want something to happen you're anxious about it you know because you've probably been waiting the fours are the energy of a square and that talks about conflict and resolution so this could be talking about you being anxious about wanting to have a conflict resolved right a conflict resolved um 
And it could even just be you trying to put your emotions aside, right? And it's kind of difficult because you've had to do that. You know, that power, that, that play of power that you have to exhibit to put your emotions aside is probably very great. You know, because one third of the emperor, which is Aries, is Pisces. And that Pisces energy does have a lot of compassion and it has a lot of feelings towards you know, everyone and everything. But then at the same time, I have to do what I have to do because I'm faced with a reality. And the fours are talking about a reality because it's a foundation. It's a square. It's a one, two, three, four. You know, four points, four sides. That makes a door. That makes a wall. That makes a four. It's a, a full four. You know, and it's a sense of completion as well with the four. Yeah. And the fours are saying, okay, now we're, now we've done it. Now we're here. Uh, it also kind of brings, you know, some finite energy to something. And that's the resolution. The four is the conflict, but the four is also the resolution. And it's kind of like we realize how we got here and we realize what we actually have to do. And I, myself, the emperor, because it really is talking about individualized um, responsibility, right? And it's kind of like feeling oppressed by the self, self-oppression, because the, if the responsibility lies on you, then there's no one that you can look to, to, to ask, you know, why, right? So, you know, you just have to hold yourself accountable for whatever it is that you want and you desire to resolve. Pisces, this is your card for the first week of March. Happy birthday. You're dealing with the Hierophant here. And this is talking about belief systems. And this is talking about, you know, your belief systems being challenged. It's also talking about what you might be subscribing to that is challenging you now. You're like, I don't know if I want this any longer. And it's a five, so it's related to the fifth house of Leo. And the Leo wants. The Leo subscribes to what it wants. It creates what it wants. It manifests what it wants. So this is also that idea of like, you know, what you allow is what will occur, you know, and what you subscribe to is what you will consume, right? It's what you will get. Um, the Hierophant is also asking you to listen to your conscience and your inner ear, Right? Not being stubborn about that. The Hierophant has a responsibility to know what practical steps to take. You know? It's kind of like this This makes things easier for you. So, you know, when you experience conflict, then, you know, taking care of what needs to be taken care of in, in, in reference to that conflict is going to make things better. It's going to bring about an improvement. It's going to bring you that sense of harmony and balance that you seek. You know, there are two keys here. And that is a sense of balance. Right? You make your own choices. Okay? You can open that door or you can go through that door. Here are the keys. You have the keys to both. We're not asking you to choose. Look at one door, open it. See if you like it. Look at the other one then. See if you like that and choose. So if you see something that doesn't look good to you behind one of the doors and you choose it, you don't have to take it. You can go to the other one, right? And it's kind of like that old idea of uh, uh, children that come from, because Leo, Leo rules the child, Leo rules children as well in a, in a way, right? That fifth house. But then, you know, the children come from the parents, which is Hierophant, right? And then it's also like, that's where the belief systems and everything come from. So it's like, if your belief systems come from parents that are, that are, you know, jaded and their sense of, you know, duty is like tarnished by what they've gone through, then it's kind of like you will eventually realize that what they've taught you to understand and believe about yourself is wrong. And then you're going to have to start realizing what it is about you that is your truth. Right. So this is talking about what is your truth and realizing that listening to your conscience, doing what, uh, you know, is right for you and not right for everything, you know, everyone that you might know or be around. Right. The Hierophant rules religions and institutions and marriage and, and, and commitment. Right. Because it's ruled by Venus. Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus also rules Libra, who rules relationships and actual the bond of marriage, right? 
both of them do in some way. But this is also just talking about, you know, what you might have been ignoring that you can't ignore anymore. And it also talks about, you know, living in alternate realities. Because isn't your reality an alternate one from the one that exists that we have not yet seen? That is spiritual. So, heed the call. And also... Understand that, yeah, you're going to learn things as you go and you're going to, you know, trigger spirituality at different times. You know, you're just learning a new lesson. It really is talking about learning. Hi, everyone. The bonus card at the bottom of the deck was the King of Cups. So we're thinking about what to do. With the feelings, the old feelings, the one that we've been holding on to that have been controlling us all of our lives, right? That type of thing. Feeling insecure about yourself, about things that you cannot change about yourself, maybe obsessing over that, you know? It's also like obsessing over money and shared resources, right? Sex is something that we're worried about, some of us. Some of us aren't getting enough of it. Some of us are getting too much of it. Some of us don't want it. So we are abstaining, right? Controlling that desire and that effort or that desire. <laughs> no effort. But also this talks about desires that need to be met, and these are all different types of desires, right? Because sometimes our desires lay dormant. And some, you know, and in some ways, if we don't give ourselves that which we desire, the desire will become distorted, right? And it sort of puts us in this trance of wanting. Yeah. Because we feel like what we want, if we get it, it'll make things better for us. Right? It'll fill some void. It'll satisfy some part of us. And we'll know that things are better. Right? We'll know. Right? But no, it really is an illusion. We really are just feeling like things are better. Right? So this card talks about knowing how you feel. And knowing how your feelings work and how to manage them, right? How to, you know, make sure that they don't get out of control, right? Hmm. Even though we're trying not to control them. Controlling them is not controlling them, right? It's the very opposite, which is weird. But we are in a Neptune season, okay? And this is the energy of Mercury retrograde in Pisces because the kings are all air and the element of their suit. So this is air and water. That's like Mercury in Pisces. Feeling inspired, feeling creative, feeling like you want to transform, feeling like you want to change something about yourself that you haven't been able to change yet. It's also wanting, needing, like I already said, you know, it's like some of us are really, really deep in a place of wanting this thing to change for us. We just need this stone to turn over, right? You need to hear that door latch unlock, right? But you also want to see that door not stop, start to twist, right? It's kind of like you need to see this thing happen. Whatever it is. Whatever you all are thinking about, because this is general with this card. Whatever it is that you are desiring, <laughs> you really need to see it happen. And you will. I feel like we all will. It's healing season. It really is. <laughs> 